what a privilege to hear the word of God. Everything that God does, he uses his word. There's nothing he does without word. So, this is the beginning of the answer to whatever question that we have in our heart or to whatever, to whatever situation or circumstances we might be going through. And that is why we need to be full of faith and very attentive to the Lord. We're going to continue today on um, the series. I think this is 22. And it is the person of the Holy Spirit. We've been learning about the major function that the Holy Spirit does in a, in a Christian's life. The, the major thing that the Holy Spirit do to us or with us or in us is that he instructs us, leads us the way that we should go, tells us what to do. Or, in summary, is like a parent to us. Yeah. And um, the bottom line of this series of teaching is to learn the practical way of receiving instruction from him. We want to leave it. You don't just want to come and hear what I have to say and write it down. You want to leave it. You want to experience it here upon the earth. We don't need this after death, okay? Because when, by that time, you will see him as he is. We will be in the spirit. We would have been liberated from the flesh that we carry about right now. So whatever is being said to us today is meant for us here upon the earth. And that is why we need to listen with intention. Because none of these things will happen if it is not done intentionally. So we are seated here, we are listening with intention so that we can go and practice what the Lord is teaching us. So we've gone through a lot of things and I'm not even going to bother going over those this morning. I'm just going to skip all the way to number 11, which is where we've been. Um, this must be very important. Why the Holy Spirit just want us to stay here for a little bit. And we will do it until everything has been said that God wants to pass across to us. So today again we are still talking about humility and brokenness. Because you cannot be close to the Holy Spirit without this. You cannot cultivate friendship with God without humility and brokenness. It is impossible. And I think that is why the Spirit of God keep emphasizing this. Because even if you start doing all that I've been teaching and you are not humble or you are not broken, you, you just put a barrier between yourself and God and it leads to frustration. And God doesn't want any one of us to find ourselves in that situation. That's why he keeps saying all this. Praise the Lord. Amen. Psalm 138 verse 6. Psalm 138 verse 6. Though the Lord be high, yet hath he respect unto the lowly, but the proud he knoweth afar off. A proud person will only know God from afar. That's the best knowledge you can have of God if you are proud. The best knowledge you can have of God is the knowledge that you have from afar. <laughs> and we already know that that kind of knowledge does not profit anybody anything. That was what happened to the children of Israel. When God said, come close to me, and they refused. So they knew God from afar. And because they knew God from afar, it became impossible for them to trust God. In spite of all the miracles they've seen. They've seen it all, and yet they couldn't trust God. You cannot trust God if you don't know him, if you are not close to him. And the only reason why Moses was able to trust, Joshua was able to trust, is because they were close. And that is where God wants to bring us. And I believe that he will help every single one of us, no matter what position you find yourself today. God will help you to get to where you need to get to, because it is possible. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5. It says, likewise, ye younger, submit yourself unto the elder. Ye, all of you, be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisted the proud and giveth grace to the humble. 
How can you be a friend to somebody that is resisting you? It's not possible. Okay? So we, we do not want to position ourselves in a place where we are being resisted by the, by the Spirit of God. And that's why this teaching is going on. So that if we identify anything in our life that the Holy Spirit is speaking to us, all we need to do is repent. What's the meaning of repentance? Turning around. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just stop those things that hinder and start doing other things. And no matter how hard it might seem to you to repent, all you need to do is cry out for the help of the Holy Spirit. He will help you. The only thing that God cannot overcome or overpower is our will. If you don't want to repent, there's nothing God can do about it. But if you want to repent and you find it difficult, cry out to God. The Bible says he gives more grace. He will give you more grace. So and I have been trying to explain to us what God means by pride and humility. Because that is the problem that most of us have. We have an image in mind about what God wants, but that's not what God is talking about. So what am I saying here? Humility is not you wearing rags. Humility is not you wearing pastel color all the time. You know, you are just always looking plain. That's not humility. That, we human beings, we see that as humility. It's not. You say, oh, this is plain. He's, he's a plain, simple person. He's humble. No. Humility is not you wearing black and white all the time. So, which means you are not colorful. And then when you see somebody that is so colorful, you say, oh, he's so proud. She's just proud. You know, because you look at the person. Humility is not judged by appearance. In fact, humility is not because you don't have makeup on. You know, because some people, they think that you are so deep in the Lord when you don't use makeup. I mean, you cannot use makeup and be humble. But yes, you can use makeup and also be humble. So, it, it doesn't translate to appearance. Humility is not you driving smart car. Okay, they say, ah, you're driving the smallest car available. Oh, the person is so humble. He's so humble. That is not humility. The humility that God is talking about here is submission to the will of God. Submission to the word of God. Submission to the spirit of God. What am I saying? You yield to God at all costs. Listen to me. You yield to God at all costs. Look, if you say you are yielded to God and you have not paid a price, you don't understand what yielding is. Because it is impossible for a man to yield to God without paying prices. And the more yielded you are, the more price you pay. So if you have not paid any price yet in your Christian life, you have not started being humble. That's just the truth. So when you are humble, you don't contend with the word of God. The only truth that you are not following is the one you don't know yet. As soon as God opened it up to you, you yield to it. That's humility. Pride is when the truth of the word of God comes to you and you say, no. This is the way I used to do it. This is the way we used to do it in our church. This is the way the church, our church says we should be doing it. And then the person tells you, but it's in the Bible. Oh yes, I know, but this is the way I do my things. That's pride. A proud man cannot submit to the Spirit of God. Cannot yield to the Spirit of God. Cannot obey the Spirit of God. That's why when God told the children of Israel, go and possess the land, they said, we will not go. <laughs> yes, that's what they said. And I know most of us were sitting there and saying, hey, how dare they say that to God? But we say that to him every day. Every day. Because no matter what your excuse is, it is not an excuse to go. Because when the children of Israel said, we will not go, they only said because they were afraid. They were afraid of the giants. 
Okay? So things that we do also that we know we shouldn't be doing because we are afraid. We are being rebellious. That's the way it's seen in the kingdom of God. And that's the way God sees it. And things like that affect our relationship with God. We cannot be close to Him. If you want to be close to God, the fastest way to be close to God is to say yes to everything He says. That is it. Whether it's, it makes sense or it does not make sense. Whether you, you think it will destroy your life or you think it will make your life better. You know, because sometimes God tells us some things and then in your head it's like, this God is trying to destroy me. I, I can't die. I can't. I know. No, you are not going to die. God loves you. Whatever instruction God gives to us, believe me, is the best. We just don't know. Do you know the reason why these Israel, Israelites did not go to the promised land? Because they thought God was setting up them up to kill them. Because they are a giant that live in the land. So in their mind, it, to them, it was impossible for them to fight the giant and win. So they said, God, you are telling us to go and commit suicide. We will not go. What we don't see, he sees. What we don't know, he knows. The future is in his presence. He knows our future. So when he's trying to lead us, it's because he's seen the future already. And when we don't yield, we hinder ourselves. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And of course, we know that they would have won because there are children that came after them prove to the whole world that it's possible for grasshoppers to fight with giants and win. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But, because what did they say? They said we are like grasshoppers in our, in our eyes. Okay? Their own children also are grasshoppers because when grasshoppers give birth, they give birth to grasshoppers. Okay, so now this same grasshopper went and defeated the giant. How did they do it? Because God is the one that does things. We just need to obey. We just need to obey. So the two major ways that humility manifests in our life, and I've said it before, I'm going to say it again. Two major ways that we manifest humility is one, total and complete obedience to the word that is revealed to us. I mean, what you don't know, yes, I understand. You don't know. You cannot do what you don't know. But as soon as you know it, you do it. If you have not done it, you are walking towards doing it. Praise the Lord. Because I understand that sometimes it might be difficult. But at least you are walking towards doing it. Like a woman that gave her testimony when God told her to do something. She wanted to do it so badly, but it was so difficult. It took her two years to do it. But she was working on it. And she eventually did it. And it led her to the greatest breakthrough ever in her life. She became limitless. She experienced raising the dead. Yeah, that's how much power she walked in. Because she was obedient. Just an ordinary person. You don't need a title. Title means nothing. There is, no, there is nothing about title in the word of God. We are the ones that are human beings. We created title. Mm -hmm. And you can have a thousand titles beside your name. That doesn't make you a friend of God. And you can play a lot of gimmicks to carry people with you and collect crowd. But what does that have to do with the kingdom of God? Mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So our desire is real. We want a relationship with God. And this is it. So total and com complete obedience to the word and the spirit. Yielding and obeying God at all costs. At all costs. Even if God tells you to do something and you are afraid, go back to him. Say, God, I want to do this thing. I'm afraid. 
Help me. Instead of just making up your mind that you won't do it. Because when you make up your mind you don't do it, you already excluded yourself. Number two, I said two major. This is the second major one. You must cast all your cares. You must. If you cannot cast your cares at the feet of Jesus, you are proud. And humanly speaking, it doesn't make sense. How can somebody be proud because they cannot cast their 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 body upon the Lord? I will explain it to you. The only reason why you don't want to put it down is because you don't believe that God can handle it. You believe that you can do it better. You want control. You want to have it. Because as soon as you put it down before the Lord, you begin to be afraid. Because as far as you are concerned, God is too weak. He's too weak. He's going to fumble. And then when he fumbles, situation will be worse. So let me, let me hold it. Let me, let me hold it so tight. So that nothing bad can happen. So you cannot be humble and not know how to cast your burden down. So a lot of people that work with God, when you see them, they are always at peace. And then in your head, you say, mm, if I was like them too, things will be good for me. You don't know what they are going through. I'm telling you, don't ever wish that you wear the shoes of a true man of God. <laughs> it's just the truth. Maybe the false one, you, you might, you might, it might be easy. It, don't wish to wear the shoes of a true man of God. Because there's a big price that they have paid to get to where they are. Because the more price you pay, the closer you get to God. Hallelujah. Okay. So when you see somebody that is very close to God, that person has paid a huge price. And you just see them smiling because they have learned the art of humility. Because if the Bible says when uh, 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 David in the in, in the psalm, he said, Let the earth be removed and let the mountain be cast into the midst of the sea. But yet what? He will still be at peace. Mm -hmm. So that's what those people have learned. They have learned to cast their cares before the Lord. So when anything is happening, they are like, okay, God, here is it again. It's yours. And, they, and you see them going about their life as if nothing has happened. Okay. So those two things, you have to be able to demonstrate those two things. And if you cannot, don't feel bad. Just know that you're going to start working on it now. Okay, so when you get to your secret place, those are the first things you need to deal with. And you know, I was telling us before, I said sometimes when you start to practice the presence of God, you just see that every time you go there, you will cry until you leave. You will just be weeping. Don't worry, just do it. There's, there's a work that the Holy Spirit is working in you that you are not even aware of. Just yield to the Holy Spirit. Just say, God, okay, I'm willing. Just be willing. And I tell you, being willing is so damaging to our soul that you just break down and cry and nobody can even comfort you. Period. Because you know the soul wants to hold on. Okay, so the process we are going through right now, what is it doing also? It's building up our spirit man. And it's putting a house in order. Because you get up to a point where your spirit man is the one controlling your house. Things happen. The soul cannot go get depressed because the spirit man is telling, you know, come on, get. Why are you cast down on my soul? <laughs> is that not what David said? Why art thou cast down on my soul? Why art thou disquieting within me? Hope thou in the Lord. For you shall yet praise him. Hallelujah. 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 David's spirit was ministering to his soul. He was speaking to his own soul. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. 
And that's where we get to when a spirit man is built on. You speak to your soul. You speak to your flesh. That's why Paul said, I beat my flesh. Black and blue. I beat it down. What's wrong with you? Sit down. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Because the spirit is the one that is in charge. And to be honest with you, if we want a close relationship with God, we've got to have it like that. Why? Because your soul does not want any relationship with any God. Your flesh does not want any relationship with any God. Period. Okay, so when your spirit is not the leader in your house, your soul and your flesh is just pulling you away. That's why you go to your secret place. If your flesh is so strong, you get bored. Your flesh will be, what are we sitting here? What are we doing? Uh -uh. It's already 10 minutes. We must be humble. We must be humble. Humility. Humility and a contrite heart. Amos 3, 3. I already read this before. I'm reading it again. It says, can two walk together except they be agreed? Humility brings us in agreement with God. That's what he does. Humility makes a man to come in agreement with God. Because what God wants is different from what your flesh wants. What God wants is different from what your soul wants. So now you come in agreement with God it is a process of humility. You let go of what your flesh desire. You let go of what your soul desire. And you come in agreement with God. That was what Jesus Christ did. The garden of Gethsemane. When he, was, when he went before the Father. And he said, you know what? My flesh really doesn't want to die. He was young. 33. You know, just about to start life. But then he said, nevertheless, because I must agree. Because the father will not move. The father will not change his position to come and agree with you. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. His throne is forever settled. It's not going to shift for you. It's not going to shift for me. But we will humble ourselves. So now let's go. Because that's just by way of introduction. And uh, we just go back to where we stopped the last time, where we started to talk about things that are not humility. Okay, number one, we said humility is not timidity and it's not shyness. Number two, humility is not bowing down to a man, is not submission to the will of a man or an association or an organization. Number three, Humility is not being pious. That's where we stopped. And we're going to continue there today. Humility is not hypocritical display of reverence or devotion. And that's why I said your look doesn't say to anybody whether you are humble or not. But that's being pious. You know, you walk like this. You know. That's what they train the priests. They train them how to walk, how to talk, how to, you know. But that means nothing. That's just being pious. That's just an appearance. What speaks to God is the heart of a man. It is what is in your thought that represents you in heaven. So you might come to church, we see you as somebody else. But you are known in heaven as somebody else. Because you are being stored by the state of your heart. So we cannot escape this process if we want to be a friend of God. We've said a lot about that. I'm just going to scroll down. I want us to. We, I gave the example of the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes, you know, concerning piousness, how they are the ones that uh, handle the school. They are the ones, so to speak, that seem to be scholars that know about the things of God. But yet, their heart was far away from God. And that's why when Jesus Christ came, they resisted him. They could not receive the truth that Jesus brought. Because they said, no, 
this is the way we do it. They have their own tradition already. You must do this, you must do this, you must do that, and if you don't do it, but who put the tradition there? It was not God, and they, they choose not to move, okay? And then the second ex example that I gave to us is about Simon the sorcerer. Simon the sorcerer gave his life to Christ, okay? A lot of people in the city also gave their life to Christ, and they were following Philip, and then they sent John and Peter to go and uh, minister the Holy Spirit to them, to lay hand on them so that they would be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And when Peter and John came and lay hand on the people, and immediately they lay hand on them, they started to speak in tongues. That's a wonder. How does that happen? So when Simon saw that, he's like, oh my God, this is some cool thing here. I can do this and make money out of it. Right? So he went to approach Peter and say, how much, how much can I pay you for me to give me this power? <laughs> and Peter said, in verse 21, he said, thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. This is Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8 verse 21 says, Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Underline that. God sees that Simon's heart is not right. Why are we following God? That's a question I'm asking you today. Why are you following God? Because obviously, Simon the sorcerer was not following God for God. He wanted something. He had an ambition. What is your ambition? What is your ambition? And let me tell you something. When people have ambition, they will do anything to get it. We all know that. <laughs> they will do anything to get it. And, he, and, and Simon was ready. The easy money you want, I'll give it. And this is happening in the body of Christ, whether you believe it or not. People pay to become deacon. They pay to become pastors, they be, yes, the people do it. And then sometimes it's not even money, there are some other things that could be done. Manipulation. Manipulation, you suck up, you fight, you, there is a strife, confusion, you lie on somebody else so that you will look good. You, you, people just do anything, anything. When we act like that, God said, you don't have portion in the things of God, period. And why do you think we have problem in the churches? Because a lot of people that are placed in critical position in the churches are not appointed by God. Yes. They get there by who you know. Who knows who? Who have you sucked up on? Okay? Who, whose favor have you won? So how can things be right when God is not there? Things cannot be right if God is not there. So what am I saying? I'm just preparing your heart so that you know how to seek after God. What are you seeking God for? What are you seeking? Are you seeking him for who he is? Father, I just want to know you. I just want to love you. I just want to know who you are. Oh, oh, I like prophets. I like prophets. That is the one I like. I want, I must be a prophet. Oh, no, no, I don't even want prophets. He's the apostle, yes. <laughs> that is the one. I was talking to somebody one day. He said, eh. Uh, so we said, who are you? He said, uh, prophet. He said, no, I'm a prophet. But I really don't like the prophet. He's, I'm, I'm, I'm really an apostle. That's the one I like. <laughs> I'm like, okay, praise the Lord. <laughs> but just tell me you are known. <laughs> praise the Lord. Because you cannot choose what you want to be. God is the one that has everybody's destiny. So when we come to the presence of God to practice the presence of God, we are coming to ask him, 
I yield my life to you. I give you my hope. What do you want me to do? What? If God tells you to lock yourself up and just be praying every day and pray every day, do it. It will seem like nobody knows you. Nobody has seen you. Trust me. People that know you are more than people that don't know you. If God tells you to be praying and you obey him and do it, you are known in heaven. The host of heaven knows you. The host of hell, they know you and they tremble. We need to begin to submit ourselves and yield ourselves to the counsel of God. Because when we approach God with the mind of what we want, we say, I just want to be a pastor. There's nothing wrong in being a pastor if God called you to be one. There's nothing wrong with being a prophet if God called you to be one. Whatever God called you to be, just be it. Every one of us, and I say this all the time, I will say it again today. Everyone that is seated here that is born again, you have a book that is written. In fact, even those that are not born again, it's just that if they never give their life to Christ, they never get to know it. Everyone that God sent upon the earth have a book that is written about you in heaven. What God sent you here to do. And when you practice the presence of, of God, that is one of the things that the Holy Spirit will reveal to you as a parent. He will make you to come into the knowledge of your calling. A lot of people live and die and they never know their calling. God does not want it to be like that. When you become a friend of God and you come with a, a true heart that is humble and yielded to him, he will let you know his plan for your life. And another thing is, the plan for your life, really, most of the time, doesn't have anything to do with your talent, with what we call talent. Because that's what a lot of people preach right now. They say, look at yourself. Are you good in singing? Then God has called you to sing. Are you good? Are you somebody that can stand in front of the crowd? Then you may be a pastor. Are you? No, it does not work like that. Look, the calling that God has for you has nothing to do with your skill. And I will give, give you an example. When God called Abraham, I mean, when God called Moses to go and deliver the, the people of Israel, what did he say? I'm a stammerer. I mean, if you go, how will I stand before Pharaoh and talk and stammer? How? But God doesn't care like that. You could be a stammerer and God will still call you to do something that you have to speak. And let me tell you something, when the time comes for you to do the speaking, you will be surprised. Because you are not speaking by yourself. Jacob had no skill. None. The one that was favored by the father was Esau. Because Esau was so skilled. He would go hunting, bring some food for the father. Jacob was not favored. He didn't have anything. So we need to understand that whatever God has for you to do is the one that will give you the ability to do it. So don't imagine things and just assume a lot of things. In fact, let me tell you, there are a lot of people in the ministry that are doing what God didn't send them to do. Yes, <laughs> a man of God <laughs> was given his testimony this man of God, very close to God. After 10 years, 10? Yes. After 10 years of pastoring churches, 12. 12, God told him, Jesus appeared to him and said to him, you have not started your ministry. <laughs> <laughs> and these 12 years, they are not easy years. So. And God told him what to do. Even when God told him what to do, he didn't understand what God was saying because he looked around him and saw what people were doing. He interpreted it differently and went the wrong way again for another two years. 
before he finally got it right. We need to seek God's face to know what God wants for her. Like even, and then even after God said to him to do something, he, after a couple of years, he will tell him again that, okay, you're done with that face. Move to the second face. So that's why it's no good to be dogma, dogmatic. Okay, God said this one forever and ever. This is it. You sit down there and hold it to that nail. No. When we are humble, we don't do that. You are humble, you are yielded. That's why I respect Lester Somerall. You know, God led this great man of God to start a church in a city. And he started that church. That church grew so much. They built a massive uh, a building as soon as they completed it. I'm telling you, this is a church he started from the scratch. As soon as they completed the building and they were set where everything was beautiful, God said, now it's time for you to, to, to move to, to the next phase. <laughs> yes. Guess what? He obeyed. Not everybody can do that. And where did God take him? God took him to a slum in another nation. And yet, he started in the slum in that nation. Guess what? Built again a massive thing for God there. I and mean, he didn't care because it was to him. It was all about God. What do you want me to do? And when God says, next, he goes. And next, he goes. Can we do that? Can we do that? <laughs> but God can take us there when we humble ourselves and when we yield. And that is what we are working towards. So, Simon the sorcerer was told, look, you will not have a part in this because your heart is not right. And if you look at verse 24, then answer because uh, Simon cried out for, 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 for Simon to help. You see? And then answer Simon and said, pray ye to the Lord for me. Okay. Simon answered uh, Peter and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me that none of these things which ye have spoken came upon me. You know, because by prophecy, Peter made some pronouncement also. My prayer is that I just hope that Simon was sincere. You know, because it's two different things. Is he saying he doesn't want the repercussion or he wants to change his heart? Those are two different things. Because here he's saying, I don't want anything bad to happen to me. But yet, did he change his heart? But my prayer today is that we will all have a change of heart. Amen. Right from where we are from now, we will choose to yield to God and to be humble and to submit ourselves to him and him only. So why are we following? Do we have our own ambition? Are we seeking God because of the selfish things we have at the back of our mind that we want to achieve? This is the time to lay all, all down at the feet of the Lord. I say, okay, God, this is my ambition. And I've been working so hard to get it all these years. I lay it down. I humble myself. I only want to do your will. Whatever you want me to do, I'm willing to do it. That's a starting point. Let's see Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. I'm going to read from verse 35. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came unto him, saying, Master, we would that thou shouldest do for us whatsoever we shall desire. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know how children do to appeal to the parents sometimes. They come to you and say, Mommy, Mommy, just say yes. Just say yes. They want you to say yes before they ask their question. Right? That's what James and John they were doing here. Before they presented their case before Jesus, they said, Okay, first of all, promise us that you will grant us a desire. Now let's see what their desire is. And he said unto them, What will ye that I should do for you? They said unto him, Grant unto us that we may sit one on thy right hand and the other on thy left hand in thy glory. Hallelujah. 
<laughs> See what I'm saying here? That's what they want. You cannot come to God like that. And say, this is what I want. But whatever God has for you, trust me, is the best for you. Is the best. And the reward is the same if you are faithful. Whatever God asks you to do, whether he has title or he does not have title, if you are faithful in it, you will get the same reward that the person that has title does if the person is faithful. Praise the Lord. God is not partial. So, and that's why we should just be free to know what God wants us to do and be willing to do it. Let's continue. But Jesus said unto them, Ye know not what ye ask. Can ye drink of the cup that I drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with? Do you know what Jesus was telling them? He said, look, it comes with a high price. That's what I was telling you at the beginning. The closer you want to get to God, the more it's going to cost you. The more price you have to pay. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, let's see what they said to him. And they said unto him, We can. And they meant it. And Jesus said unto them, Ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of, and with the baptism that I'm baptized with, that shall ye be baptized. But to sit on my right hand or on my left hand is not of mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared. Underline this in your Bible. Underline it and go and meditate on it. Because Jesus Christ told them, say, okay, you will drink that cup that you want to drink. But even that drinking of that cup does not give you the privilege to sit on my right hand or my left hand. I just wish you understand what the Bible is saying here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Even after you think you have paid the price, even when you have done everything, whatever still comes to you is what God has prepared for you. Period. So don't say, oh, because, because I've spent so many years, then this is what I should be. Or because I've done this and done that. This is no it. The things of God is not like that. It comes to the person that God has apportioned it to. Do you understand? God has calling for everybody. It doesn't mean that, okay, because somebody has been 30 years in the church, then that person should be a pastor. You don't become a pastor by being around for so long. A lot of pastors that we have right now, they are administrators. Okay, so you because they've been there like elder, they, they, but then they are standing in the position for, for the spiritual one, and it doesn't work because for you to pastor a church spiritually, you can't do it by yourself, you need grace, you need help. And that is given to those that have been apportioned. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So even if you pay your price, yes, you have paid your price, but what comes to you is what God has apportioned to be your own. If I pay my price, what comes to me is what God has apportioned as per my calling. Praise God. Hallelujah. And it does not make anybody greater or anybody less. That's one thing we need to fix in the house of God. What makes you greater is your relationship with God. And it doesn't have anything to do with calling. It doesn't have anything to do with title. It doesn't have anything to do with gifts. Jesus appeared to somebody and told the person, there is no reward for gifts. No, no. There is no reward because you were given. Say, I can prophesy. Yeah. You, can only, you only prophesy because God gave you a trance. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If that utterance is taken from you, you cannot prophesy. True. 
Okay, so what should God, the only thing you can be rewarded for is faithfulness. Faithfulness. So when God really gives you those, that gifts, are you faithful in what God sent you to do with the gift? Because the gift is for a reason. It's for a reason. It's not for people to know you. Or well, they know me as a big prophet. What have you achieved in the kingdom of God by the reason of the gift that God has given you? That is the return that we get a reward on. So we really need to begin to change our perspective in a lot of things. God loves every one of his children equally. God does not love the apostle better than the prophet, or the prophet better than the teacher, or the teacher, you know? Because even with that one, they have given it crap. <laughs> you know, even among those gifts, they have classified it. And some people will say, well, because I am an apostle, I am above you. You are just a pastor. You are just a teacher. Oh, uh, I'm a prophet. I'm above. There's nothing like that. Nobody is above anybody. The only one that is above is Jesus Christ. He's the head of us all. We are all body. Okay, even though you are a prophet, you are not the head. Right? You are an apostle, you are not the head. Whatever you are, you are not the head. No, there is no two heads in the body of Christ. Christ is the head and we are the body. And whatever part God has made us, let us embrace it. Let's embrace it. Please, let's change our perspective and humble ourselves so that we can enjoy God. Because when we don't do that, it becomes difficult for us to enjoy Him. We are resisting Him. He's telling us something else. Our mind is somewhere else. Completely. I want everybody to understand how special you are. You are so special that God has a book for you. And your book is not identified, is not, is not identical with my own. It's not identical with anybody else's. It's yours. But you know, sometimes when some people leave and they don't fulfill their calling, God takes it and gives it. You know, that parable that Jesus Christ said is true. true. God takes it and gives it to somebody else that has been faithful in their own. So some people have uh, some extras. Yes. Extra reward when they get to heaven. Why? Because not only did they do their own that is written in their book, they did extra that somebody else refused to do. Okay now, do we want to have title here and get to heaven and there's no reward? Okay. Because a lot of people are in that situation right now. And the sad thing is this. If you are in the ministry and you are not called, Oh, you will so suffer. People might not know. I'm telling that's just the truth. People around you will, might be looking at you from outside and envying you. You will so suffer that in fact it will take the grace of God for you to make heaven. True. Because when you don't have the anointing and you don't have the gifting, you will do anything to to make it work. You know what I'm saying? You want to work it. You want to work it. And some people get to the point of going to take power from the enemy. Huh. Mm. Yes. So that they can do lying wonders. So the question now is, okay, now who are they serving? Mm. So already you know that is born from ambition. It's not God. And that's why I asked you at the beginning, what are you seeking God for? Hmm. And pastor almost took my preaching out from my mouth. You see, <laughs> after the praise and worship. When he started, because that is in there. We, we haven't gotten to it, but it's in my note. He was talking about people that were following Jesus Christ because of the fishes and the bread. What are we seeking God for? Let's fix it right now before it's too late. Before you, you start running after ambition and God is not there. Because it just leads to destruction. So these people, they waste their time here. And then, well, 
God forbid that they don't even make heaven, you know. Because some will not. That's why Jesus Christ said, a lot of people will come to me that day. And say, didn't I do this in your name? Didn't I do that? And I will tell them, depart from me. You workers of iniquity, I do not know you. I do not know you. So, every of our ambition, please, let's come to the feet of Jesus. Let's just lay it down there. Just lay it down there. Because I tell you, the plan that God has for you is greater than your ambition. You just have not seen it. Because you don't know it. And let the Holy Spirit's will is appearing. Reveal it to you. And start to walk in it. Because that is what is going to benefit the body of Christ. That is what is going to benefit the kingdom of God. And that's what is going to yield reward to you after life. So Jesus Christ said, but to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is, n is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared. And hey, guess what? I am not jealous of who God prepared the right hand and the, and the left hand for. I just want what God apportioned for me. We, we need to all get to that point in our Christian work. All I want to do is to fulfill the calling of God in my life. I must do the will of him that sent me while it is day. Because night come when no man can walk. My desperation is for me while I still have breath in my nostril. To know everything that God has for me and to do it. Whatever it is, is good for me. where we all need to get to. That is humility. Then you can be a friend of God because it means you are in the same page with God. If we cannot humble ourselves like that, if God brings our book before us, we argue with him. Why are you telling me to do this? This is the one. So then how can we work with God? How? But I know we will in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because we will all humble ourselves. We will yield to God. We will let God open up our book before us. Read it to us. And we say, yes, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Those are the people that God is looking for. God is not about to start to wrestle with anybody. To make sure you do the right thing. And when the ten had it, they began to be much displeased with James and John. Do you see now? Do you see what caused fighting in the church? They had them. They overheard them. And they said, how dare you? And I know the reason why they were angry with them is because they wish they were the one that asked first. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Fastest and best. Mm -hmm. You have asked first. This is what we two are planning to ask. You, but you have gone ahead of us. They started to fight. But Jesus called them to him and said unto them, he called all of them, he said, ye know that they which are counted to rule over the Gentile exercise lordship over them, and their great ones exercise authority upon them. But so shall it not be among you. Underline this in your Bible. Because this is what is happening in the churches today. Exactly what Jesus said, don't do. That's what we are doing. Jesus Christ said, the Gentiles, they exercise lordship over people around them. They exercise authority. He said, but so shall it not be among you. So shall it not be. It shall not be so. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. What does that mean? A servant. Shall be a servant. Shall be a servant. 44. And whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servant of all. 45. For even the Son of Man came not to minister unto, 
but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. If you want to be great in the house of the Lord, be willing to give your life so that you can be well with your brethren. That's why Paul said, he said, I've got it to a point that even if I need to be a cost so that you can understand the truth and get the truth, I'm willing to do it. That's what service to God is. You lay your life down. Jesus died so that we can live. He's looking for people that we die for the sake of others now so that he can be well with them. So missionaries have gone to dark places where the gospel is not. They kill them there just because they wanted to make sure that they hear about Jesus. But we are here fighting. Who we sit on the right side or who we sit on the left side? Who will be the head? And who will be the servant? Who will be the leader? And who will be the follower? Who will take this? And who will take that? Who will take this position or that position? Or have this title and the other title? Jesus said, this should not be an issue. So what do you think Jesus is going through right now? Agony. Yes. Jesus is being agonized by what is going on in the body of Christ. How can we be like this and be close to God and be a friend of God? Okay, so when you are his friend, what is your intention? What do you want to use that friendship to achieve? So that people will come and anytime they have problem, because it's only your mouth that will speak something and it will come to pass. So they will come out, people will be coming to you and when you get up to a time, you put a bowl by the door. <laughs> yes, that is what people are doing right now. Drop so you drop something. You want to hear, you want listen to me. If you are going to drop something to hear you, well, that word is not coming from God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It might be true though, sometimes because the devil mixes the truth with the with the, with the lie. They are getting their information, but they are not getting it from God. Because the Bible says, freely have you received, freely give. And that word is still the same today. Mm -hmm. It's forever settled in heaven, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And if you are truly, truly, truly a servant of God, you will be willing to do anything. You will spend and be spent. You will spend and be spent. I'm going to finish here. We still have a lot of material to cover under humility. But I'm just going to be patient with it. Because God, there's a reason why God is taking us through all this. So that as we go to, to, to seek out the face of God, we start on the right track. Because you are seeking God for who he is. You are seeking God for what is in the heart of God. You are uniting your own heart with God's heart. Saying that, Lord, I agree with you to bring your kingdom to come upon the earth. And when the kingdom of God is going to come upon the earth, it starts by coming in your life. Kingdom come first in your own life, and then it come upon the earth as it is in heaven. And so it shall be in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's stand on our feet.